Need some help with GED social studies? Well, in this video, I'm gonna give you some of my all-time best tips to help you pass GED social studies with a high score. Now, I worked with a GED test student once and he came to America from a country in South America where there was a civil war going on there and he got the math and science really fast, but he really struggled with GED social studies. Now, on the other hand, I've also worked with students that they did really well with the social studies, but they really struggled with math and science. So whether you've been really struggling with GED social studies to the point where you're getting frustrated, or if you just want to see what you should expect on the GED social studies test, and you're just looking for some tips going in to ensure that you get a high score, this video is really going to help you out. And by the way, if you're new here, hi, my name's Parker, I'm the founder of Test Prep Champions, and I make videos like this to help GED test takers like you pass the GED so that they can move on to bigger and better things in life. And if you want more videos like this, please hit subscribe down below. Tip number one, always read the questions first before you read the passages. It won't always be necessary to read the full passage, so you don't want to waste your time reading it if you don't have to. Tip number two, whenever multiple answer choices seem like they could be right, go with the one that seems most right. Tip number three, as a general rule of thumb, the more specific an answer choice is in a multiple choice question, the more likely that answer choice is to be the correct answer. Tip number four, Use what I call the power words method. Whenever you see words in one of the answer choices that are either similar or related to words in the passage, that answer choice is very likely to be the correct answer. Tip number five, use process of elimination whenever you can to rule out answer choices that can't be correct. This will help you narrow in on the correct answer so that you can get more questions right. Tip number six, whenever you see two answer choices that contradict each other, know that they both can't be right, so one of them is probably going to be the correct answer. Tip number seven, always rule out answer choices that have information that directly contradicts something that was stated in the passage. Tip number eight is to be familiar with how to read basic graphs like this one. This will really help you out with questions on the test. Tip number nine, understand that the tests are randomized. And what this means is that nobody can predict with 100% certainty which topics you'll get on your test. However, topics like the US Bill of Rights and the US Constitution and the process of how a bill becomes a law tend to show up often on GED social studies. So it's worth taking a little bit of time to familiarize yourself with these topics. Tip number 10, don't waste your time on memorization. GED social studies is not a memorization test, so you're not gonna have to memorize facts or dates or names or anything like that. However, it is going to be important to memorize one topic and that is mean, median, mode, and range. Mean, median, mode, and range questions can show up on GED social studies and also on science or GED math, so it's worth learning how to do this topic. Tip number 11, understand that answer choices that include information or facts or wars or events or or anything that is mentioned in the answer choice that was not talked about directly in the passage, these answer choices are usually going to be incorrect. Tip number 12 is to use what I call the substitution method to beat meaning of word questions. First, identify the word in the passage that you're asked about, and then look at each answer choice and substitute that definition in. Now, obviously you're gonna be doing this mentally. You're not gonna write anything out. But by doing this, you're gonna ask yourself, does this meaning make sense? If I take this definition and substitute it in for that word in the passage, would this make sense in the context of the passage? Tip number 13, whenever you get a question that's on a topic that you're not familiar with, note that there's almost always going to be enough information presented to you in the passage or in a graphic or in a figure or a table that you can reason your way through the question using logic and some common sense to get the correct answer. So if you see a question on a topic and you don't have much background information on that topic, don't give up, don't freak out because you can probably use the information given to get the question right. The next tip is to know what to expect going into your test. First, know that there's gonna be about 35 questions. And to pass, you wanna get at least 18 questions correct. This means that you can only afford to get about 17 wrong. The test only has one part to it. And for the questions, you can expect to get a mix of fill in the blank, 
drag and drop, multiple choice, and hotspot questions. You are allowed to bring a calculator. Now the specific type of calculator is called the TI-30XS Multi-View Calculator. You don't have to buy one, they'll give you one for free that'll be on the computer. So it's up to you if you want to buy it or not. Some of the question types will require you to read the passages and then answer questions that ask you about the meaning of what you read in the passage. Others may ask you to analyze historical events and arguments, while other other questions will require you to use graphs or tables or charts and data to get the right answer. Now when you're reading the passages and looking at the graphics, ask yourself what's the main idea here and what evidence supports it. Also ask yourself what conclusions can you draw. If you start thinking this way while you're reading the passages and looking at the graphs, you might even find that you're already anticipating the answers to some of the types of questions that you're going to get. Another one of my favorite tips is to not worry about the time. So take each question one at a time, forget about the last question, don't look ahead to the other questions, just put yourself in the present moment when you're doing each question, cheer yourself on in your head, tell yourself I can get this question right. And if you're stuck, give it your best guess and then move on. If you have time, come back to it later. Don't waste a whole lot of time on any one question. Go into your test with confidence, expect that you're gonna get all the questions right. Now, it's not realistic, obviously, that you'll get all of them right, but you wanna go in with that expectant attitude, like you're expecting to do well. And if you've prepared well and you've studied hard, you've tried a practice test or two and you know that you're going to be in good shape, then you have nothing to fear going into your test. And hey, if you fail, you fail. You'll learn from it and you'll pick yourself back up and you'll review and you'll get back in there and you'll get it the next time. One often overlooked tip that's really important is to get enough sleep. Now it's important to get seven to nine hours of sleep the night before your test, but it's also important to start getting good rest a few nights before your test. Why? Well, let's say that the night before your test, you end up anxious and nervous and you have a hard time sleeping. If you haven't gotten much rest the whole week leading up to your test, you might fry your brain because you'll be so tired. One important factor for success on not just GED social studies, but on the whole GED test that's often overlooked is knowing how to get to the test taking center. So when you pick your testing center and you sign up online, Look at the address, put that into Google Maps or a similar program, and look at the route for how to get there. Better yet, actually go out and drive to the testing center the night before the test, so that way you'll know how to get there. Then make sure you leave early. I sometimes get questions from students asking if there's going to be a lot of world history on the test. While you can expect to see some world history, the tests tend to focus around U.S. history and U.S. governments and politics. A great tip is to know the difference between a fact and opinion. So here's a little pop quiz for you. If I were to say that the Pittsburgh Steelers are the greatest NFL football team in history, is that a fact or is that an opinion? Being from Pittsburgh, it's a deeply held belief of mine that the Pittsburgh Steelers do happen to be the greatest NFL team of all time, but that can't be proven to be true. So that's my opinion. Now, on the other hand, if I were to say that the Pittsburgh Steelers have won six Super Bowls, then that would be a fact because that can be proven to be true. And while we're talking about opinions, it's always critical to keep in mind that not all of the passages on your test are gonna be written to inform you. Some of them will be written to give you information and facts, but some will also be written to persuade you. They'll be written by an author who is trying to get you to see things their way or is trying to persuade you. So always consider the author's point of view when you're reading the passages. Ask yourself, is there bias here? Is this somebody's opinion? Are they trying to persuade the reader to agree with their point of view, or are they just simply stating facts and simply stating events that have happened? Another tip is to make sure that you've practiced, and this should really go without saying, but you really need to practice. So I recommend to get yourself a good textbook, whether you use Kaplan or Princeton Review, or you've got some other company that you like, whatever the textbook happens to be that you think is gonna fit your needs. I highly recommend getting a textbook that has a lot of social studies practice questions. So instead of spending your time studying a lot of history and learning facts, and data and things like that and trying to memorize stuff, your time is better spent practicing. Practice doing questions with circle graphs and bar graphs and maps and all kinds of visual components. And so you just wanna practice reading these questions. You're gonna practice doing the reading for meaning because that's really gonna help you out when you practice the different types of questions that you're likely to get on your test. And so also make sure that you take at least one GED ready test. I know that they're $6. I know that sometimes that's a hardship for people, but I really recommend doing that because your success on a GED ready test often is going to correlate to how you'll do on the real test. Another tip is to keep in mind that you won't always have to use all of the information provided to get the questions correct. So for example, some questions are going to require that you use just the passage and they'll give you a graphic that you don't really need to get the question right. 
or you might just be able to look at the graphic, like whether it's a chart or a map or some kind of graph, you can use that graphic to get the question right without even reading the passage. Now on the other hand, sometimes you'll have to use information from both the passage and from the graphic. So just keep in mind that if you're looking at a graphic and you can't figure out the answer, you might need to look at the passage and vice versa. And if you want to see where you're at right now with GED Social Studies, then you're going to want to take my GED Social Studies practice test for free. I put a video together where I covered the answers to some questions that are provided by the GED Testing Service. They're going to be very similar to the questions you'll get on the real test. So go check that out right now.